mentioned exclamation mark Macharino in the chat. We don't have any coupon codes, but you know, if you like players like Demi, uh, Art, Keen, and Nightmare, two of them aren't going to be moving on to the finals. But if you want to support them, if we do get enough contributions to the Macharino, we will be opening up the prize pool to not only the finalists, but the semifinalists as well. True, we're actually almost there. Shout out to Lord oh. Loken because he contributed to the prize pool as well. 65 USD. Um, and because of that, I think we only need, I think, 5 or 10 USD more to open it up to, to top 4 getting paid out. Oh, there we go. There we go. Kurt, so Kurt can confirm Lord the Loken. amount. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Lord Loken there. What does 65 mean, though? <laughs> All right, well, while we ponder on that, we are going to be loading into 2000's Atmosphere LE. -da -da -da. In the bottom left-hand corner of the map, starting all the way in the bottom left-hand corner, we of course have our blue Terran player coming out from the land of Korea. He, of course, is going to be representing up... Nope, they rebranded. The Freaks, we have Key. You almost got it. Even Chase got it. Quang Dong Freaks, mate. No, it just it just says Freaks on Liquipedia. They can call themselves Quang Dong Freaks as much as they want, but it's always gonna be the Freaks. No, that's not true. They can call themselves <laughs> Quang Dong Freaks. That's that's what the team their team name is on on that's, Liquipedia. That's because it's Freaks. Liquipedia it's are, just they, Freaks. They aren't allowed. It's just Freaks. It's and the URL is Africa underscore Freaks. It's because they aren't allowed to add sponsor names to Liquipedia. Because there we go. Yeah, to Liquipedia. <laughs> there we go. Shake they can call that. themselves Quang Dong as much as they want. Shaking my head, Yaku. And sporting in the top right hand corner of 2000 Atmospheres LE, we have the South Korean Protoss player representing Team NV. It is Nightmare. But which, what, what, which name sounds cooler? You got the <laughs> freaks. And then you got Kwang Dong freaks. Actually, Kwang Dong freaks. Yeah, cool. they got the Dong, mate. What are you talking they got about? The dong. They yeah. got the Dong. And you got the Kwang. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. You don't want the Dong? I want the Dong. <laughs> God damn. Uh. Ah, yeah, it, speaking it, of teams, uh -huh. I have to express <gasps> my disappointment once again to Team NV here. True. Or not before getting rid of the anime waifus. Yeah, yeah. They've been pretty consistent with switching it up, though. Like, uh, we saw it uh, this weekend, right? And we also saw it in, yeah. in like, Sparkling Tuna Cup for the past two weeks. We've, we've had three waifus in three weeks. And now we're back to to logo. Yeah. We've had three waifus in three weeks, and now we only have a logo. <laughs> oh god. Do you think it's because um do you think it's because of because of King of Battles? They're like <laughs> they're like I'm, you know <laughs> There's there's a tournament with sponsors we should probably put on our logo. Nah mate. You know <laughs> you, you wanna know what it was? It was one hundred percent it was just a condition. Here's what it is. It was just the condition since creator made it up first in his GSL group. They said, all right, for three weeks, you get to pick three waifus. <laughs> then we're going back to the logos. <laughs> if you win again, then we can talk about it reintroducing the waifus. That's 100% what it was. All right, everyone tune in to GSL on Thursday because creator is going to be there. He's going <laughs> to be fighting for his waifus. <laughs> he's going to be looking to come out first in his group. That's the best motivation you can really get. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Uh, meanwhile, speaking about this game a little bit here, Keen, he has opened up in a very interesting way. It was a 1-1-1, but he has not stopped pumping out these Marines. He has a Cyclone and a Medivac on the way. This is something that we saw from him um, even uh, in his debut a couple of weeks ago in this tournament. Like He is a very aggressive player in TVP specifically. Yeah, it's always something where whenever I watch a keen match in a TVP, I think, I want to do that in TVP. And I realize I'm nowhere near Keen's level, so I mess it up instead. <laughs> but yeah, he doesn't he doesn't go for the typical mind drop and to go into scout. He wants to make sure he gets some damage done. Even if he even if the probes are pulled, you know, these marines wanna kill something. Oh yeah. 
that they do, mate. They're zooming across to that. Meanwhile, it was a pretty standard opener from Nightmare. He did open up with a Twilight Council. Blink is on the way. Um, no fast or incredibly fast Warp Prism or anything like that to be aggressive. He's just expanding, taking a third base. So Nightmare approaching things in a very chill manner. But is he going to have enough for this drop? Oh, no! Oh, he moves just away! Just finished up! I was going to say... Uh... Blink just finished up, so that gives him a bit of an edge, but not if Keen is able to sneak in like this. Oh man, not like this. Oh my god, we'll see. I mean, there are plenty of Blink stalkers. They're going to be able to clean everything up. They do focus down at that Widowmine before it gets a shot off. Wow. Keen doesn't even kill that stalker that was on the back end. Does he kill any? No, he kills one probe, and that's it. I'm pretty sure that was a scouting probe from earlier as well. <laughs> what a defense out here from Nightmare. He got a little, it started off a little shaky when he moved the stalkers away, but not losing a single unit in that, I don't think it gets any more perfect than that. Yeah, exactly. Beautiful defense here by Nightmare. He has the D and Keen. That was a pretty big investment, losing the Widowmine, losing the Medivac as well. Sure, you could argue he got a little bit of scouting information, but I mean, there wasn't really much to scout anyway. And let's not forget, now Nightmare has the absolute map control. I'm not sure if he was planning this from the start, or if it's more of a reaction since he shut down that drop so hard, but five more gateways are on the way. Charge is being researched as well. With this Observer, he could be a little bit annoying in Keen's main, or he could uh, harass the natural a little bit while he builds up more of a charge lock force. The ball is 100% in Nightmare's court right now. Keen has to do so much to win it back yeah i was so curious if nightmare was going to take more gases but there we go he does take his gas at his third base so he is looking to macro up a little bit more to probe up that bit more and tech up as well um it isn't just going to be like into a charge mass gateway all in there is a templar archives on the way so he does plan to get out some high templar for archons maybe even storm if the game goes on that long but nightmare has got a lot of potential with this war prison yeah, he's kind of reached a point where he's feeling a little bit more, uh, what's what I'm thinking of here, like spicy? No, not really spicy, but uh, he's feeling like he can afford a loss or two. He wants to see what he can get done. Mm. He can afford to take a couple of risks, that's what I mean. Yeah, meanwhile, Keen, he's all about those risks. We saw how, risks. We saw how much he invested in that drop earlier. Now we see a double drop into the main base. We even have a Raven to help support the army if he needs to. We do have enough energy for a recall. Meanwhile, Nightmare is just out that, outside the base of, of Keen. Yeah, that tank is really going to make sure that Nightmare isn't going to be able to go into the natural, but I'm not sure if it matters too much. Oh, the Cyclone did ward away the warp prism for a while and keen's double drop is getting a hell of a lot more done oh. across the map it might even snipe the templar archives before storm could finish up being researched that was a massive risk here for keen and it is absolutely paying off wow we even had some auto turret harass in the main base as well this drop still has not been cleaned up by the way we have an overcharge but the war prism is going to be taken out and just like that finally gets cleaned up but the damage was absolutely insane meanwhile across the map what did nightmare really get done with his own aggression nothing mate we had bunkers we had tanks keen was so solid defensively yeah i mean he killed like a cyclone i think is what it was mm -hmm. And not much else. There may be a bit of a window here for Nightmare um, as, you know, Keen is trying to reposition as he lands at third base. But, I mean, I'm just looking at the tanks right now, Light, and Keen is looking so solid back yeah, home. Yeah, exactly. We've got two tanks here on the high ground. We've got a decent amount of bio as well. Widowmine production has commenced. There is an opportunity maybe for Nightmare to slip into the natural. Maybe. He does have a lot of zealots. Let's, let's be real here. Let's respect his army supply as, you know, it is looking pretty similar between the two players really really does nightmare setting up for a little bit of multi prog but keen is already scouting it mate nightmare pulls the trigger and this is actually a really decent position to fight the bio sure the tanks are are in range but they're also in range to deal some friendly fire just like that nightmare shapes off a couple of units but it's going to be a little tricky to uh continue moving forward 
yeah it was a great sandwich there where he was able to catch the majority of the buyers so there was a great trade overall for nightmare and it looks like he's planning to back off because behind this there we go colossus are on the way extended thermal lance is on the way interesting that nightmare decided not to rebuild the temple archives and he's taking up in a different direction instead uh, meanwhile oh my god he actually pounces back into that third base yeah, he knows. He knows that he's going to have to get rid of a little bit of supply to get those uh, Colossus and also, you know, that he can get away with this. Not a lot of anti-air right now for Key. No Vikings whatsoever. So that uh, War Prism in the Sky is completely unhindered. Keen will keep his third base alive. Surprisingly, not losing too many SCVs either. But he hasn't quite been trading as efficiently as uh, I think he wants to. Yeah, again, those tanks have been a little bit out of, range, out of range for a lot of these fights. The Widow Mines as well haven't had the best connections. In the end, Keen will be able to force this back, but he lost a little bit more than he would have liked, right? He had a worker lead earlier, now he's taken a bit of his own losses. Here's what worries me for Nightmare, though. As that engagement was going on, Nightmare was losing more and more and more units. Keen was just pumping up his army supply. It was something like 30 against 70 in favor of Keen for a while. Now Keen is finally starting to lose a lot of uh, a lot of his economy, a lot of his SCVs. But Keen still with the massive army supply advantage. You know, he could go across the map if he recognizes this. He could go for a bit of a counterattack, maybe pull the boys if he has to. <laughs> I was, was going to say, yeah, for the past minute, for the past like two minutes, as soon as you started talking about this, I was like, wait, just say it. Just, just tell him to pull the boys. <laughs> yeah. I, I know what you want. You yeah, got to build, build up to it, man. You got to build up to it. True, true. Oh, my God. Yes. I mean, you're correct. He has a massive supply lead right now, and the Colossus are only just now coming out. There are two Colossus, which is a little bit intimidating. Um, and because of all these losses that King just sustained, maybe going for an all-in would work for him. But for the time being, he is reproducing those SCVs. Like, he's continuing to pump them out. And he's actually transitioning into Vikings and Ghosts. Well, not a bad idea here, I would say, for Keen. There we go. He was going for Mind Drops, and he, they are getting a couple of connections. And... Sure, Keen lost a lot of SCVs earlier on, but let's not forget, Nightmare also kind of started off this game losing his entire natural uh, mineral line. Mm. So it's not like Keen is at a massive economic disadvantage. Yeah, yeah, it could be uh, could be worse. <laughs> don't, don't get me wrong. Um, as Keen is finally pushing out across... Um, again, I, I'm so surprised he still continues to sustain this massive army lead. Oh. But it's still all about the, that positioning. Oh, boy. Absolutely. Now I have three Colossus out. And that's pretty dang scary. There are a lot of Vikings in the skies as well. And in terms of the bio, he has a decent Marauder card. He's actually even on Marauder Submarines. Okay, never mind what I said earlier on. Yeah, no. I'm liking Keen's army a lot more than Nightmares right now. Yeah, yeah. Especially if he's able to fight with everything, right? With his ghosts, with yeah. his tanks, with his Widow Mines. He's going for a bit of a double drop just as Nightmare is pushing up this ramp. I guess that's the big condition that you were mentioning there, like, Keen does have to fight with... He either has to fight with everything he's got, or he's got to, uh, kind of trick Keen into a very unfavorable position, you know? Trick a patient blink or two out of him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll see if he can pull it off, because again, he's still committed with that double drop head towards the top left-hand side of the map. Could even force a recall, depending on how devastating it is. Meanwhile, he's continuing to scan. He wants to try and get eyes on that army. Um, he had some sense towers earlier. I think the first one was sniped, so he's going to have to maybe even rebuild that as he's still struggling or still just attempting to fortify this third base. Hopefully, eventually, get this fourth. Yeah, I was going to say, I know that Protoss generally expands quicker than Terran, but... This is quite some time to not have a fourth base. Nightmare does have eyes on it, but he should also recognize how... Well, for now it's pretty well fortified, but this is a bio army. If it pushes out at any point, then that's a pretty massive blind spot for Keen. Yeah, and as soon as Keen takes his fourth base, Nightmare, he is on his way. He has his disruptors, he has his Colossus. Again, Vikings are not going to be the only answer. Sensor Tower finally finishes up, so he'll have a better response when it comes to these runbys, and the drop actually doesn't commit to hitting one of the bases. Instead, gets caught out of the Watchtower. He's being very oh. careful here! Keen! Oh. A bit of a late split, but yeah, I guess he did keep whatever bio units he put alive. Nice little use of the disruptor there just to clear up a little bit of anti-air. Get rid of some of the zoning. 
Oh god, exactly. Meanwhile, this army here on the left-hand side is going to get cleaned up. Not without taking out the tank, though. And that may be influential as the game goes on. At the same time, Nightmare, he backs off for a little bit. Double drop is getting ready to go into that base, by the way. But oh, Nightmare, he warps in to defend. Yeah, I mean, three zealots and a high templar are not the scariest defense in the world. I really like what you mentioned just now, like with the tank and with the uh, with the bunker, because now we see this fourth base position of Keen is so fortified. You know, he's throwing down the CC in that position to force a bit of a choke point. There are so many tanks, but now Keen's blind spot has shifted that third base location. He does have that sensor tower, and that will give Keen a pretty massive heads up, but. Yeah, I don't know. It still takes a little bit of time for Bio to go back and forth. Yeah, that's a yeah, scary might, thing, right? Even, uh, yeah, he may even need to unseize and move along. Oh, yes. exactly. Meanwhile, another tank goes down. These, oh my god, even a second tank goes down to these disruptors. Despite Keen and now having two sets towers up and running, he's still struggling to deal with this main army. Yeah, I'm loving how Nightmare's utilizing this disruptors here, Light. He's being very patient with them. He has so many of them as well. Maybe too many. Uh <laughs> oh yeah. They got caught out and uh this is kind of it. Two ghosts got taken out, which is nice, but not before they land their EMPs. Looks like Keen is trying to go for a bit of a sandwich. Another fantastic EMP on most of the uh, stalkers. And here comes that sandwich we were talking about, but it looks like Keen just doesn't have quite enough. Or does he? Oh the Vikings are reigning supreme! Yeah, and the splits on those Novus towards the end were pretty good as well. We do have a recall, but in the end, the majority of the army was cleaned up. Keen, with the surround, was able to dominate that fight. Not just that, he also hasn't stopped taking up. Lib range is on the way. We have Lib production in full swing here. Keen is transitioning to a much better army against this ground toss. And that's the late game composition you want as a Terran player in TVP. Oh, I'm getting flashbacks to uh, the other night when we casted Spear versus Trigger. I'm getting flashbacks to you mentioning Nazin uh, yeah, true. versus Geralt. No, I didn't watch that game. I haven't watched it yet. Uh, oh, not the best uh, purification overs here from Nightmare Key. Not losing oh. too much. Even a third disruptor getting sniped there towards the end. So Keen coming out on top in these trades. And again, now he's stabilizing a little bit more. Now with these libs, with these tanks, it's that much more harder for Nightmare to push in. And he has to respect this. And he is. We have a fleet beacon on the way. He knows that he has to get off the ground and into the skies. Yeah, but that costs money. Which is why I do appreciate that behind all of this, Nightmare wasn't neglecting his economy. He did go for a fifth base. He can definitely afford to do this. He's keeping Keen very, very busy. Uh -huh. I say that as Keen has finally had enough. He knows he can go for a counterattack. And this is just about when Nightmare is most vulnerable, when he's trying to transition to a late game. Yeah, exactly. And we can see Nightmare is zoned out of his fifth base. The liberation, the freedom zones come on in, and Nightmare has to give up the position. He cannot defend his fifth. There's just something about seeing these Venn diagram of Liberator Slight that just, it makes me feel truly free. <laughs> it makes me, it makes me want to tie that American flag bandana to my head again. Oh god, let's go! Meanwhile, here we go, EMPs connect with the majority of the army, Disruption goes off, it does miss! And Keen is staying here, he doesn't want to overstay his welcome! That was a decent purification over from Nightmare. But once again, he doesn't have an answer to the Liberators yet. Sure, Keen is losing bio here and there, but that's the most replaceable and the most expendable units that he has right now. Yeah, and I'll be honest, I don't know I don't know how I feel about the switch into Mass Immortal, by the way. Like, I guess it makes a little bit of sense. Like, Colossus and Disruptors are having a much harder time and Immortals are both here, but we needed more Stargates. To be fair, we have two, but we never got into the air. We never got any Stargate units. This is such a good choke point to utilize for the Liberators. No matter what, something's going down. The uh, Stalkers just can't quite get in range. No more anti-air, and GG is called. Keen takes game number one. Even though he looked pretty shaky there, I gotta be honest, Light. I was so hyped for Nightmare <laughs> after he took control of the early game. But Keen, you know, you were mentioning he likes to be active, he likes to be aggressive, and he likes taking those risks that... You know, can sometimes real that not a, that not every Terran player can really um can really get away with. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Honestly, it reminds me a little bit of Beyond, like, the way that Beyond plays this matchup. Like, uh, obviously, not that extreme, but, like, Beyond also, he loves, like, yeah. stimming forward and trying to snipe your, like, disruptors before their nervous go off, and sometimes he succeeds, sometimes he doesn't. Uh, <laughs> constantly it's going always for exciting drops. to watch. It by is, the way. it is. <laughs> Oh god. That's why, got him on, that's why they got him on Kwangdong. Exactly. <laughs> he is a he is nothing if not a freak. Exactly, exactly. What a game number one to take there in the end. That was an amazing surround as well. I thought that he was gonna have to be on the back foot and defend his fourth base until he yeah. got liberators out. But even before I, the liberators came out, like he had a he had a great fight. Yeah, I was really worried that he might have been losing a little bit too much on one front before the other front uh, really hit the Protoss army, but mm. In the end, Vikings, man, they're pretty good. Oh, they're pretty good. They made short work of all those colossus. The splits were pretty good as well. The EMPs, everything really came together for the Terran there. And we'll see if he can do it again as we are getting into game numero dos. Si, papi. Si. <laughs> dos. Anyway, we are going to be continuing our series now on Blackburn LE. We're in the bottom left hand corner of the map, spawning all the way in the bottom left hand corner, rallying his SCV across the map. Oh boy, is it across the map or is it just. It's across the map, not just across the base. Oh, wait, what? Huh. Anyway, he is going to be representing Kwangdong as he is a freak. We have Keen. And spawning in the bottom right hand corner of Blackburn ALE. Unfortunately, not getting proxied. We have the South Korean Brutals player representing Team NB. It is Nightmare. Man, doesn't he know anything about this map? You know what I mean, <laughs> like you either you go for proxy uh -huh. or you take the gold. Yeah. Otherwise, you're guaranteed not to win the raffle. You're like, game one, I really just wanted him to pull the boys. Here in the game, I just want a proxy. Or like, you know what? You know what? If Hot Runner was here, he would have gotten up. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I kind of wanted him to pull the boys, but in the end, he did win that game. So, uh, you know, what do I know, really? Yeah, Keen, he's, he's an amazing player. We could only dream to be as good as him and... Oh boy, we'll see if he can uh, clean up this series or if we have an ace match because, you know, Nightmare, like, he had moments of brilliance in that last game as well. Yeah, he definitely really did, especially in the early game. Unfortunately, it definitely felt like Nightmare with his follow-up uh, counter-harass really wanted to leverage the early game momentum in something huge. Once Keen was able to stymie that, it did not... It did not look like uh, it did not look like the ball was going back into Nightmare's court. Mm. Yeah, I think maybe Nightmare he was just a little bit too idle with his army. Um, there were moments where uh, before Keen had set up his sensor towers to protect both his bases, where Nightmare could maybe rotate between the third and the fourth and really abuse um, kind of the the lack of, of vision of Keen and maybe find a way in. That's that's what we kind of expected, right? Because we saw him pick off like tank after tank, bunker after bunker, um, but he never really committed to anything, and he, he gave Keen a lot of time to prepare. In all fairness, though, his tech did get delayed, like, twice. So. True. It's not true. Yeah. Yeah. He, 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 yeah. True. So, yeah, Nightmare could have done a little bit more in the early game, but at the same time, he had a plan that, uh, fortunately, did get disrupted, and who knows, maybe if he was able to get Storm, we would have had a completely different game coming out of him. Speaking of completely different game, Keen researching concussive shells very very early yeah unfortunately for keen this is scouted uh speaking of being scouted they both do see each other oh my how did the reaper not get surrounded oh my god <laughs> it almost did man but uh you know something about keen he he's got some lubricant he does he doesn't stop it from getting that flank though <laughs> It does go down in the end, but a couple of things just happen. One, Keen is aware this is not a Blink Stalker opener. You know, he's going to have to have defenses at home for the first Oracle. Likewise, Nightmare scouted that there was a Marauder, so it had to be a Concussive Shell opening from the Terran. Yeah, or at least most likely it's going to be a Concussive Shell opening. I've seen a couple of Terran players 
Who go Marauder first, but they don't get okay. Concussive Shell, and I'm confused every single time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. I'm so. sure there's a reason for it. I just don't know what that reason would be. I mean, you might as well, right? If you're going to be yeah. committed to your Marauders early on. Mm -hmm. Not wrong, not wrong. Meanwhile, the EDFs oh. do commit to the shade. It looks like they will be able to snipe both. Oh my god, the bait is real! I'm... Oh! Oh! Oh my I, god. <laughs> I uh, jumped up back on your ping, I'm sorry. Oh my god, yeah, there was a little bit of latency there, but in the end, the Oracle did get sniped. It looks like Keen will be able to maybe clean this up. The Vikings are going to have to help out, but you know what? These adepts are dealing a decent amount of damage. Yeah, good use of target firing. Able to take out four of these SCVs. That's just about most of what I was able to catch there. Yeah, yeah, uh, just as you were having some internet issues, um, Keen had baited the Oracle into a Widowmine that was hidden behind the CC, and the, the Oracle went down immediately. It was insane. Um, so, again, Keen had a very nice response to the Oracle, but still lost a couple too many SCVs to the Adept. So, a little bit of a give and take there. Yeah, that's a little bit unfortunate. And with that, I guess it is hard to uh, figure who is at an advantage. Yeah, looking at the unit's loss, I actually didn't realize, but the second Oracle went down as well. Oh my god, that's a lot of gas down the drain. Yeah, I, I feel like I have to give it a keen at this point, especially considering <laughs> he is building up a very massive force behind all of this. Phoenixes are definitely going to help Nightmare a bit in the defense, but uh, it's 33 army supply versus 10. Keen doesn't have to commit, he's not all in, but he is looking to at least kill that third base. Yeah, exactly. Very you see, Keen, he's pushing out across the map. Thankfully, Nightmare is here to slow him down, but we're on Blackburn. It doesn't take too long to get across the map. At the same time, Keen is going for a Widowmine drop. Up! Oh. Right to Natural, which is already saturated. Ah! The reaction! No! Nightmare! That's his Nightmare right there as 14 probes go down. Ah. Uh. Uh, and that's almost game right there, mate. That's so many workers at the same time. Keen is heading towards that main base, not towards the third. No vision there, yeah. You can even see Keen turns around with his tank and the rest of his bio because he realizes, okay, I can uh, play a little bit more. I don't, I've already gotten damage done. You know, I can continue to get damage with this drop. I don't need to commit all the way to kill that third base. Uh. Target firing the probe so well, even despite this battery overcharge. Ten more of them go down. Nightmare surprisingly not too far behind, but considering the fact that uh, Keen is finishing up his cert base and he has access to mules, um, yeah, this is a pretty massive mineral deficit for Nightmare. Yeah, we'll Gas see. Yeah, it's a bit of a different story. I mean, to be fair, Nightmare does have Blink. He does have high ground vision, so he's going to be able to get into the main base. The tank is covering the ramp on the low ground, but not the main base, so Nightmare, he gets in. Let's get in, and what is the reaction from Keen right now? He's pulling his bio. Nightmare trying to go for a bit of a multi prog. He's actually winning this uh, front. And he's winning the uh, natural front as well. Yeah, and just like that, he doesn't lose anything, really. Like, a wow. little bit of damage was dealt to the reactor, but he's able to repair that as well. Keen with an almost flawless defense. Yeah, I guess the most you can say that really went... Uh, Nightmare's uh, ways that he was able to delay the production of Keen by a little bit. That was a real Phoenix, by the way, not a Haluk. So, yeah, another painful loss here for Nightmare. It's catching back up when it comes to the worker count, I will say. Those three Nexuses are definitely helping him out a ton, especially with Chrono Boost. But uh, he, despite that, I'm sure he would have wanted to get this Temple Archives a little quicker, right? He would have wanted to finish up Charge by now instead yeah. of delaying everything because he had to spend minerals to remake all of these probes. Exactly, like losing workers that early on, it does add up. It delays everything else that you had planned for the game. Uh, you know, you don't get into a game of StarCraft thinking that you're going to lose 16 plus workers <laughs> in, the, in the blink of an eye, so... That, uh. That's why you go in planning not to make those 16 workers in the first place. <laughs> that's, ah! that's why you go two base all in, mate. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's why I'm... <laughs> That's why I'm losing all my kids. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I have a 20% win rate, win rate in TVP. Let's go. 20% I wish. <laughs> oh, God. I wish I could even get it that high. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs>
Uh, meanwhile, we do see Keen going for a bit of multi prong. He does have a small force here in between the bases. He scans, confirms. Oh, okay. I can't quite push in here. Not yet. Instead, looking to sneak into the main. Yeah, once again, there's a little bit of that blind spot here for Nightmare right in the middle. And Keen, it looks like he doesn't want to uh, risk that too much right now. Mm -hmm. You know, these uh, stalkers are too far behind. Yeah, this is where I get a little bit worried because now Keen is giving Nightmare a lot of time and hey, Storm is about to finish up in a couple of seconds and Nightmare is going to hit a wonderful timing with that Storm. Up. I just realized there's no detection here for <laughs> Nightmare. Oh no, now I've never, he had to cut all these corners, man. He had to make up for all these lost probes and unfortunately that's uh, one of those ways to not make an observer till now massive three drop coming into that main base oh. nice little EMP here for uh keen but this is a lot of protoss i will yeah, say nightmare he just forces his way through into the natural base there's nothing to stop him at the same time keen is not stopped either in the main base of nightmare and something that i'm a little bit concerned about is here defensively at home all these widow mines are going to reset is it going to be enough to hold on for keen uh, i don't know mate it's going to be difficult the storm no! oh! Oh, right on top of all those SCVs. Uh. Surprisingly, the SCVs are uh. putting up a bit of a fight here. He's losing all of them. Don't get uh. me wrong, but uh, yeah, they actually do whittle down the number of uh, stalkers by a little bit. And once again, I mean, okay, it's a little bit of a different story now, but... Keen for a while there could definitely afford to lose more than Nightmare could. Made and Keen is killing everything across the map. He depowered all of the production. GG gets called. Keen does it. I only realized that army supply until right at the end there, lad. I was like, oh, maybe there's a way for Nightmare. And I was like, it's 70 versus 13, mate. <laughs> But yeah, Keen is going to be our first finalist tonight, taking that series 2-0. to zero. He will be either be having another TVP in the Grand Finals, or he'll be having a TVZ. But I will say this, for Nightmare fans, do and for Nightmare as well, he is not going to be walking home without anything today, as massive shout-out to Soundo here, in addition to that 100 USD, has also contributed another 5 USD to the prize pool. Which means that we're going to be splitting up our our prize amongst both our finalists and our semi-finalists. Ah, uh, thank you, thank you so, he, thank you so much, Sando. Yeah. Go, go. And I will say, I think I think he might have earned that uh, nightmare. I mean, you know, he eh, sure it was a two zero, but there were a lot of moments of brilliant uh, moments of brilliance there that really made me that really made me kind of stop short, got me a little short of breath. Mm -hmm. Oh he yeah, <laughs> he slipped up in the end, and you know it's because Keen has some of the best TVP from what I'm looking at right now in Korea. But you know he kept up with him for a while. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, we saw how Nightmare was able to deflect like the initial push, how he was able to um, shut down those kind of those concussive shell marauders. Like again, Keen came into that game with a bit of a plan. And he had to rethink that plan a little bit as well. Um, and we ended up in a really awkward kind of base trading scenario, right? Where Keen committed a lot of his army to the drop across the map, and he had a lot of Widow Mines at home to defend, but there was no detection. So the Widow Mines, they were slowly getting more damage over time, and we saw how far ahead he was, and it was so smart of him. Um, it was so smart of, of, of Keen to like focus down those pylons and to just shut down all the production of, of Nightmare. Yeah, I thought we were in for a bit of a base race. We weren't really. <laughs> Keen was gonna win that every single time. Mm -hmm. Those SCVs were the real MVP though, pulling them. You know, despite the storm, <laughs> they didn't stop whittling away at the stalker line, man. The widow mines as well. Actually, we didn't really notice. We didn't really get the catch in the end, but I think they did. Uh, they did reset and they mm -hmm. did contribute to the to the defense once again. And I think I need to relog because I'm getting the infinite connecting blizzard services. It happens. It happens.